Well, welcome to Helix Biopharma, a channel innovating with purpose, delivering with urgency, and joining to discuss the company's pipeline, some milestone expectations, and a little bit of the history uh, of the gentleman joining me here. Of course, we have Chief Medical Officer uh, Thomas joining first and foremost. Welcome, sir. Well, thank you very much, Kyle, for having me and for the exciting opportunity to tell a little bit more about Helix and the prospects, of course. Yeah, pleasure, pleasure to get you on. So I want to dive into this because you have a few pipeline candidates with your lead being uh, L-DOS47 focused on neutralizing the acidic TME. And I know that's kind of a mouthful. So simplify this, break it down and tell us what's going on here. Yeah, absolutely. So the lead product of Helix, L-DOS47, is a very unusual ADC. It's novel and unique. And uh, there is actually no other company that uh, takes the approach that Helix is currently taking. So long time ago, uh, researchers have learned that attacking the tumor alone doesn't do the trick. Actually, the tumor embeds itself in a tumor microenvironment that has supportive character, you know, in protecting the tumor and grow and then ultimately even metastasize. Now, the product that Helix is developing is targeting the tumor microenvironment uh, in the sense that it enhances the activity of chemotherapy or checkpoint inhibitors that are actually facilitating the immune system to attack the tumor. Now, one of the protecting layers around the tumor is the acidity of the tumor microenvironment. Now, why is that a bad thing for you know, attacking the tumor? Acidity is a, a hindering um, the immune cells actually to invade the tumor because once they are in an acidic environment, they actually go down in, in a resting stage. Yeah? They cannot really move and they cannot really act. Now, this is known for a long time and the, the approaches to change that have so far been um, you know, futile. The product that Helix is developing is um, a enzyme that's covered with a nanobody that is binding very tight to the tumor. The enzyme itself neutralizes the tumor microenvironment by changing the pH from acidic to neutral in converting lactic acid into um, urea um, and uh, carbon dioxide. Um, and basically what it does, it, it breaks down the tumor defense around the tumor. Now, uh, why is that important? Um, the uh, tumor is um, attacked by um, immune cells, mostly lymphocytes that are invading into the tumor. And in a neutralized environment, the, um, uh, the tumor cells uh, cannot really defend themselves very effectively um, against this attack. Now, the product is now in phase 1B, has uh, shown promising data, and Helix in this year um, is embarking on a phase 2 randomized trial that will, that will unequivocally demonstrate that uh, the addition of LDOS-47 to a checkpoint inhibitor like Pembrolizumab, it's the market leader in this field, will add substantially to the efficacy. Um, of um, this checkpoint inhibitor. And that will allow um, a much, um, um, much improved treatment um, um, against those tumors. Well, the tumors that come into play are actually very important. It is non-small cell lung cancer, it is pancreatic cancer, it is ovarian cancer, and even some other types. But that's not the only thing that uh, Halux, Helix is developing. I can tell a little bit more about the other assets in the pipeline, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, no, please do. I mean, uh, you gave us little aspects into the milestone expectations with your lead, but maybe tell us uh, what else is going on in the pipeline and what investors should be paying attention to. Right. So um, the other product that actually is very promising is a product, a small molecule that can be given orally. Uh, in a very particular situation um, where people have been treated for acute leukemia. Now to treat um, um, acute leukemia effectively towards a cure, the only option is really an allogenic stem cell transplantation. Now that's a very invasive procedure by which you need a donor to uh, provide new stem cells to patients. And um, these new stem cells, they are basically then building a new immune system in that patient um, that keeps you hopefully leukemia free. However, despite the intensity, intensity and the invasiveness of that procedure, about 50% of these patients are still relapsing. 
And their prognosis is not very good. So overall survival is around six to 15 months for these patients because no effective therapy has yet been introduced for that situation. Now, the small molecule of Helix is able to trigger a graft versus leukemia reaction, which is basically then teaching the immune system to recognize the host leukemia with a possibility to eradicate. It. Now that offers a option for a cure in a very dismal situation. Um, this has the benefit of um, you know, being um, a, a new first in time uh, treatment for this option. And while Helix has FDA um, um, uh, approval of um, orphan drug status, uh, the approval pathway as such is uh, rather short. So because it's an orphan indication, Helix will need only to go for a limited number of patients in the trial that would uh, be probably acceptable uh, for conditional approval already in the United States. So milestones here are not far away, and we hope to be in the clinic next year, uh, showing that actually our hypothesis is leading to substantial benefit for this type of patients. There is another asset though, um, that targets um, or you know, enters a field that's currently considered as being hot. Uh, we have considerable experience with nanobodies now because this is a part of LDOS 47, but we have also added uh, a lot of knowledge in uh, using CCAM6 as a target. CCAM6 is a tumor exclusive uh, target expressed at the tumors that I mentioned, lung cancer, pancreatic cancer, ovarian cancers, and others. And um, so we have decided to use um, a novel uh, CCAM6 nanobody uh, and uh, attach a radioisotope to it. Now, radioisotope is a, a very limited radiation of high energy once these uh, particles have attached themselves to the tumor. And they, uh, they have the advantage that um, actually there is no particular resistance mechanism to radiation therapy, A. And B, um, actually such a product would not only target the tumor, but also the tumor, the supportive tumor microenvironment. So the hopes of such a therapy uh, for um, hitting very, very difficult to treat cancers like pancreatic are quite high. So we are really excited about this product. Now, um, we would like to have that IND ready next year and then also start clinical trials uh, with this product, which could be um, uh, changing the game for pancreatic cancer. Now, roll back a little bit for me, um, maybe just to give some insight on how you kind of got involved with Helix Biopharma. What led up to that kind of aha moment? Yeah, no, very, very well. Of course, I met Helix in July last year. Uh, Helix at that time had one asset in development, LDOS 47, um, but it was easy to see the potential um, that the company has in itself. So by the time um, uh, till end of last year, uh, we have added uh, two more compounds, one of which is the leukemia compound uh, with a, you know, a very, very promising prospects, but also another compound that actually changes um, gemcitabine from being an intravenous um, compound to oral. That has been done before by a number of companies. Uh, so for example, bristol myers Squibb, who have turned 5-azacitidine into an oral drug, which is now used um, for maintenance therapy in acute myeloid leukemia. Gemcitabine, however, is a WHO essential medicine that is used across many tumor types. And by making this oral, we can um, make therapy for cancer patients much easier. They can take this uh, tablet home, can you know, treat themselves, don't need to travel to hospitals all the time. And we can keep tumor growth at bay by using this drug. Again, because gemcitabine is a very well-known entity and a ton of data is already describing its efficacy, the approval pathway, uh, particularly in the United States, is equally short. So we don't have to demonstrate um, that this is an effective drug. We only have to demonstrate that it really disseminates in the body like with intravenous use. So we're very excited about that one as well. It offers the potential to partner uh, very soon with a major pharmaceutical company and help the company to finance and move forward with the other programs. 
Well, on that note, as always, we'll pass it off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you think and consider subscribing for news catalysts that come down the wire. We're going to bring it to you here. But on that, we look forward to catching you in the next one.